SPI LCD panels are a cheap way to add full colour displays to your Raspberry Pi Pico projects without using loads of I.O. pins. But the standard driver libraries are slow and awkward to use for anything more than simple animations. In this tutorial, we'll build a frame buffered display driver which uses memory mapping to boost our graphics performance. This allows us to build more complex displays, including a mini games console for some micro Python games coding. Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I've already looked at how we can attach a serial SPI LCD screen to our Raspberry Pi Pico and how easy it is to get that up and running with MicroPython. But the basic driver I used was writing individual commands to the screen to draw each object that we wanted to render. Now, whilst this is great for some applications such as instrument panel mimics, it's not very good for any sort of fast moving display such as a mini games console. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to use a memory based display buffer to speed up this overall frame rate. Now to start, you'll need to get your Raspberry Pi Pico MicroPython development system set up and running and talking to your board. Now I've, I've covered this in detail in my getting started tutorial, so please do have a look there if you need some help. And again, I'll put links to all of the code and, and other tutorials and so on in the description um, down below this video. Now you, you'll also need to get your Pi Pico connected to an SPI LCD panel. And again, I've made another video showing you how to do that. Now the, the device that I'm using um, in, in this particular LCD panel here, uses an ILI 9341 driver chip. So if you're using an LCD panel based on a different chipset, that there's, no, there's no problem as long as you can get hold of a driver that allows you to drive the display and send it blocks of data uh, as a single display data block. So, so as long as your driver, your driver provides those functions, then, then you're good to go. So once you've got the basic software and hardware set up, we're ready to build our updated display driver. So the software interface to the LCD panel isn't going to change in this new driver version. And that means that we can just simply use the ILI 9341 library from the previous tutorial or, or whatever driver you've installed for your display. So we're not going to modify the way that driver actually works. We're just going to modify the way in which we use it. Now, if you want to use the same driver as me, then you'll find it at this web address on screen at the moment. And again, that will be down in the description down below. So first, we need to set up a clean project with our new tests. And I use PyCharm as my development software, but feel free to use whatever package suits you. So if you are using PyCharm, don't, don't forget that once you've created the project, um, you're going to need to change the project settings and enable MicroPython support. And this will then load a few extra modules before you're ready to start. We then need to grab a couple of files from our driver package. So in mine, I'll need to copy over the main driver file, which is this ili9341.py file. And we'll also then copy over the demo bouncing boxes file so that we have a starting point for our tests and we can get something happening on the screen. But, but for now, th these are the only files that we're going to need. So at the moment, the boxes demo is a bit inflexible when it comes to what we'll want to do. So, so we need to be able to easily adjust the number of boxes on screen and, and for reasons that we'll, we'll see later on, we'll need to be able to adjust the active display area. So I'm just adding some code here into the main loop to generate a controllable number of randomly sized and colored boxes so we can easily increase and decrease the workload on the system. I'm also adding in a couple of variables so that we can easily adjust the active screen area that we want to use. Although for now, I'm going to leave that at the full size for this ILI 9341 display of 320 by 240 pixels. And finally, 
The original demo had some frame limiting uh, code in place. Uh, and really, the way that worked was if, if there were very few boxes on screen, um, they started to move very, very fast. And, and this frame limiting software just meant that it kept it to a, a sort of a specified frame rate. But as, as we want our code to run as fast as possible so that we can compare our display driver performance, I'm just simply going to remove that limit. Now to see if we've managed to improve performance, we're going to need a way of measuring it. So the boxes demo loops through each box to animate its movement. It then repeats this process over and over. And this, in effect, gives us a, a, a frame render every time that it finishes rendering all the boxes. And we can use this by adding a timer to measure how long it takes to render 100 frames and then convert that into a frame rate value. So we're going to measure over 100 frames. And this should give us a good average rate value. And we can then simply print it out onto the console, which will let us see it um, coming up in our REPL interface. So we need to set the frame counter and a start time, and we're going to store those in variables at the start of the main loop. After that, we then count 100 frames, we'll log the time taken, convert it to a frame rate, and then reset everything so that we can measure the next 100 frames. Now, all of the code I'm using in this tutorial will be available in my GitHub repository that I'll link to in the description down below. And also you'll find that on the project page for this video on my main bitesandbits.co.uk website. So if we upload this to the PyPico and then use the REPL interface to run the code, we'll see that the boxes are all animated as we expect. Now, if your code isn't working, please check your typing or, or, or please just download the demo software from my GitHub repository. And again, I'll put the link to that down in the description. So this demo renders each box by sending a block of pixel data to the LCD panel over this SPI interface. And this pixel data is then written into the LCD panel's display memory, and that makes it appear on the screen. To animate the box, the code then has to send a second block of pixel data to overwrite the previous one and set the pixels back to the background colour. And that effectively rubs it out before we can then send the next frame. Now this does mean that each box takes two data transfers to complete one frame. And as you can see from the demo, with only a few boxes, we get a really good frame rate. But as we add more boxes, this drops off dramatically. Now this shows that this technique is very dependent on how many objects we are animating. So if we increase the box sizes, again you'll see that the frame rate is very quickly reduced. And again, each data transfer now takes more time to complete due to the amount of data being sent. So if, if things aren't updating frequently, or there aren't many objects, or the objects are small, then this overwriting technique will work fine. But increase the workload and you very quickly run out of frames. So we're going to use a frame buffer to improve this performance. And, and, and what then is a frame buffer? So at the moment, we're writing everything directly to the LCD screen memory. And this all has to go over the SPI interface, and that then becomes the bottleneck in our system. We simply can't get the data transmitted fast enough. Plus, if, if two boxes happen to be overlapping, then we're actually sending pixel data that can't actually be seen, and that wastes even more of our precious bandwidth. So with the frame buffer, we'll create a copy of the LCD panel memory in the PyPico Pico memory. And then we're going to direct all of our drawing commands to that. And the basic theory here is that writing shapes, etc., to internal memory is much, much faster than trying to write it to the LCD screen memory using this SPI channel. So we're doing direct memory access rather than, rather than using that slow serial channel. We can therefore render all of our objects into our frame buffer. Once we've built, 
the next frame, we can then use a single block write command to send the fully rendered screen to the LCD panel in one go. What this means then is that each, each frame therefore requires a full panel's worth of pixel data to be sent over our SPI interface. Now, this makes the frame rate display much more predictable as the amount of data being sent over the SPI channel is, is pretty much fixed and independent of what's actually being displayed on the screen. Now, now of course, the, our, our overwrite method will be faster if the total amount of display data needing to be sent is much less than a full screen's width a full screen's worth per frame. But, but the frame buffer will then very quickly win out as our display gets more complex. So to, to build a frame buffer, um, that requires us to create a memory object in Python. And this can very easily be done using a byte array. And this is simply an array of character values or, or, or single byte integers that relates to a block of memory inside the PyPico. Now, as the LCD panel uses a 16-bit color value for each pixel, this means that we'll need two bytes per pixel. We're then going to need to rework our screen drawing functions to write into this frame buffer rather than to the LCD panel directly. Now, now luckily, the MicroPython language has a built-in frame buffer object that will do absolutely everything that we need it to. So to use that in our bouncing boxes demo, we first of all have to import the library using this import frame buff statement. Then a bit later down here, we need to then create our byte array. So remember we're saying here we have a width of our screen is 320, the height of our screen is gonna be 240. So we need to create a byte array, which is the width times the height, and then times this two, because of course we're using two bytes per pixel. We then need to instantiate an actual frame buffer object, which we're doing here. And we need to instantiate that, telling it which byte array memory object we're going to use to store the pixel data, and then the actual size of our display. And the final argument here then tells us in what format we're storing our pixel data. So the framebuff.rgb565 is the standard 16-bit um, LCD frame uh, representation of pixels. Now, to once we've got that um, in place. When we then create our boxes, so down here we're creating our box. Again, we're telling it um, the, the sort of size of our screen, the, the size of the um, uh, rectangle. Uh, and then we are providing it with this fbuff object. So we're actually going to pass a reference to our frame buffer into our box object creator or constructor. So up here. So, and that then will be where it needs to draw the actual uh, squares to. So if we look at the um, drawing fun uh, method, we can see here that we are using one of the um, methods from this frame buffer object. And, and if you have a look at the documentation in a bit more detail, you'll see that there's a whole range of these um, graphic primitives that come with this frame buffer library. And very much those mimic the ones that you'll find in any of the LCD driver libraries. So we have points, we have lines, we have rectangles, and, and so on. So in our code, um, we're going to use that fill rectangle, and that will then draw this, um, well, it's going to be a square, it will draw that onto the memory frame buffer inside our Raspberry Pi Pico. And of course, that is a much faster operation. Then when we come down into our loop, so we're, our loop is very much the same as it was before, um, we will update our positions of our boxes, draw our boxes, and then, um, of course, our draw boxes, as we've just seen, will write it to memory. And then we have to, after we've completed this um, whole update and render function, we will then display it out to the actual LCD panel with a single block write. And that's what this is doing here. 
After that, we can simply then, we don't have to worry about having to overwrite any of our uh, any of our squares. We can just completely wipe our frame buffer and, and, and reinitialize it back to a completely blank screen. And that's with this single command here. So that just simply fills our byte array with black pixels. And then of course we go on and do our normal sort of frame rate monitoring here. So again, this code you'll find in the boxes buffer.py file in my repository. And this is the buffered one. So let's have a look and see if, if how that works by uploading it to our Raspberry Pi Pico. So if we upload all the files and then run the new demo in our REPL console, we'll immediately get an out of memory error now, this is one of the big drawbacks for using a memory mapped frame buffer in, in a small microcontroller. So even though the Raspberry Pi Pico is a powerful microcontroller, it still only has 240 kilobytes of RAM. And if we take our 320 by 240 pixel display, that's 77,000 pixels almost. And then with two bytes per pixel, our byte array needs to be 153,600 bytes in size, or around 150K. Now, although it sounds like there is 90 kilobytes left, MicroPython itself needs some RAM for its internal processing, along with any other program data that we might be using. So very quickly, our, our spare 90K RAM is eaten up by just the MicroPython environment. So we need to reduce the amount of RAM that our frame buffer uses. And there are really two ways to do this. We can simply use less pixels. So by limiting the size of our display, we immediately use less memory. Now, a lot of my coding tutorials um, use TIC80 for writing games, and that works great for games at a low 240 by 136 pixels. So, so if we use that size, then 240, by 136 times two bytes per pixel, and that gives us 65,000 or, or about 64 kilobytes. And indeed, um, these size displays, you can actually buy them uh, as LCD panels, which you can plug in using an SPI interface. We can also reduce the number of bytes used per pixel. Now this is the method used by most of the old 8-bit computers from the 1980s, where they had to fit a memory mapped frame buffer into a 64 kilobyte memory address space. So if we used 8-bit color instead of the 16-bit color, this would give us 256 possible colors, but we instantly have our memory use to down to one byte per pixel. If we went down to 4-bit color resolution, giving us 16 colors, we can then fit two pixels into each byte. Or go all the way and down to one bit color resolution, which is basically monochrome black and white. And in that, we actually can get eight pixels per byte. And of course, that drastically reduces the amount of RAM we need to store our frame buffer. Now, ideally, I would like to run our display at the full size using eight bit color resolution. And I did try writing a frame buffer to use this, um, but it, it had to convert the 8-bit pixel values into 16-bit color pixel values for the LCD panel. And that requires you to process each individual pixel as you pull it out of the frame buffer memory. And unfortunately, Python just couldn't do it. Um, it, it could do the processing, but because it's a, a, a sort of interpreted language, um, it only managed to do this at around five seconds per frame. So this really was not usable at all. So, so doing that is something I'm gonna have to come back to. And we're gonna have to use C++ coding to get the speeds up so that that can work. So for now, we'll just have to make do with using a smaller screen area to get it into a usable um, frame rate and memory size for our Python solution. So the frame buffered boxes demo allows us to try out different screen sizes and then different active areas within that screen. So 
In the main code, we, we first of all set up the actual LCD screen and the SPI interface to that. So we define our, our screen width, height and rotation. And the rotation here just simply makes sure that we get a landscape version. We, we then set up the SPI interface and then initi initiate the, or instantiate the display object to give us an, uh, the actual driver, which will drive, and in my case, this ILI9341 LCD panel. When we then set up our, our frame buffer, again, this is now where we're setting up the active area that our Pi Pico is going to be writing to. So here I'm setting up to that 240 by 136. The, the only other um, change then needed for that um, is when we do the block display, that, that, that's why this display block here looks a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. And really what it's doing there, it's having a look at the maximum dimension. So I've, I've built in here the 320 by 240 maximum pixel dimensions for the LCD panel. And we're really then just making sure that our active buffered area is displayed in the center of that screen. So that's all that's happening here. So this uh, is just working out the um, positioning of that buffer and then supplying in the actual frame buffer um, memory map there. And of course then it just goes off then and, and cleans that up. So, so let's have a look and see how that um, performs with our Pi Pico. So we'll start with 10 boxes being animated on the screen. And we can see then our frame buffer display using that smaller area. It's actually working, so we've, we've not overloaded the memory of our Pi Pico. And we're getting a really respectable frame rate there of around sort of 44 frames per second. If we now increase the number of boxes up to 50, we can see that we're still getting nice smooth animation at just slightly over 30 frames per second. So the slowdown in frame rate is not as noticeable as it was with the standard driver. And it's down to the processing of the box updates. And then of course, the drawing them into the actual memory of that frame buffer. And if we continue increasing the number of boxes then, this time up to 100 boxes, again, you can see that the processing time and the time taken to draw into the memory is still reducing our frame rate, but nowhere near as fast as it was with our standard overwriting method. So our frame buffered solution now gives us a display driver that we can use in a much wider range of applications. Again, providing that we are content with that reduced screen size. So the 320 by 240 pixel LCD panel that I'm currently using is now a bit of an overkill with lots of wasted space. So let's try one of the correctly sized panels for our new driver. If you look around, you'll come across a number of 240 by 135 pixel panels. And the one I have here is a WaveShare panel that has a 1.14 inch display, but it does come along with a joystick control and two buttons, and it simply plugs onto the bottom of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now again, do, do check in the description for links to these displays on Amazon and eBay. Now this panel uses a different driver chip, the ST7789. But if you go to this GitHub repository, you'll find a suitable MicroPython driver library, which we can use in our project. So I'm integrating this code by simply creating a new file in my project and pasting in the raw code from the driver file. If we then have a look at the pinout for the LCD panel, we can work out what pins are being used to connect the two devices together. So here we're mostly using the SPI1 channel and the pins then are the GP10 and GP11. So in our box buffer code, we need to import our ST7789 class and then update our SPI interface setup so that it sends the data to the correct port. We can then instantiate our ST7789 driver class and supply it with the rest of the pin numbers for chip select, data, and our reset pin. 
Now, our, our box class is already completely using the frame buffer for all of its drawing operations. So the only other modification we need to make is to the block write command that actually sends the buffer memory out to the LCD screen. Now, almost all LCD drivers will have a block write command, and, and this ST7789 driver has a blit underscore buffer method that does exactly the same job. So we can simply replace our block method call with this blit buffer call, and then of course update the screen coordinates, and we can now use the full LCD panel size. So if we upload all of this onto the Raspberry Pi Pico and run this new boxes demo, we'll get our bouncing boxes display running full screen on our smaller ST7789 LCD panel. So this gives us a very usable SPI display driver for our Raspberry Pi Pico. With the smaller LCD board, with that integrated buttons and controller, um, we basically got a, the bare bones of a small handheld console, which should allow us to develop some micro Python games on it. All we need to do now is to build out the frame buffer methods to handle sprites, text and so on, and we're pretty much ready to go. Having said that though, there is one other route that I want to take for this project, and I'll be covering that in the next video. And that's to use the two cores that come on the Raspberry Pi Pico to share the load in this system. So we can use one core for our game logic, and then the second core, we can actually use that to run our SPI interface so that those two tasks run in parallel. But uh, multi-core processing really does deserve a video of its own, so, so please um, do wait for that one. Um, in the meantime, do make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel for, for more coding, making and gaming tutorials. And again, as I said, watch out for that multi-threaded LCD driver video, which will be coming very soon. So I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.